Hi, I'm Itamar Shani, and I'm Israeli Jew. And I'm Haytham, and I'm Palestinian Lebanese. And we became the best friend. I, I personally thought of Israelis as the enemy. Yeah, there's um, unspoken emotions and traumas that are um, brought down from one generation to another. Like, it's not even too far away. Like, my, it was my dad's generation. My dad left when he was five years old on the back of a donkey with 14 siblings So across the, to walk across the border. So, like, it's natural for me to grow in an environment where, like, these people kicked us out of our houses. When you look on the wall and they, they said, hey, those people behind the wall want to kill you. All Arab are Muslim. Uh, all Arab are terrorists. Uh, uh, you need to be careful. Uh, and uh, you need to like, go and be in the army and find against those like, people that want to kill you. This is, this is how you've grown up with. And uh, you all the time uh, have the fear that like, something bad is going to happen and so they, they, they're going like, to try to like, uh, attack you. So growing up in the Arab world, you don't get to interact with Israelis or Jewish people or like not like it doesn't exist. They're just the people across from the wall, basically. We were living in a place in south of Lebanon where there was continuous war with Israel and there were atrocities that were committed by the Israeli army in Lebanon. It creates like a feeling of that you can't trust anyone who comes from there, although you've never met anyone from there. I grew up in a village, it's a settlement called uh, Elkanah. I know people that are died, I know people that like experience like a trauma of like uh, her mom exploded in like a restaurant and uh, how they, they will live with this, it's make you angry. It's make you, uh, you, you have resentment, you're like, I don't, I, I, I don't want them to exist, you know? Like, this is not fair how they hurt me and all my friends. Like, it's very easy to go into the, the loop of hate. It's contagious, I will say. I always had a dream, I think, on my bucket list to live in, in what we can say in North America, but at the time from living there, it was just like, I want to live in America. So when we got here, I, I experienced like a, a continuous expansion of my consciousness. Because living in the Middle East, there's a lot of noise happening around. There's a lot of events, there's a lot of wars and conflict and dogma that like just dominates your daily existence. And I landed in Vancouver and I remember in the airport, like I just like went outside of like the airplane and I smelled the air and it was so clear and people are like so relaxed. <laughs> I said, I, I have to live here. I have to feel this like energy. I want to like be in this like, I, I call it La La Land. I lived my life according to this like, usual narrative. I went to school, went to university, got a corporate job, worked for 10 years in the corporate world. And then um, for some reason, I started having these thoughts about going to culinary school. I just started playing with the idea of cooking. And I started cooking every day at home, going to work and just cooking, going to sleep. And that's all I did for a whole year. So in early 2017, we opened Aleph Eatery. Aleph is the first letter of Arabic, Hebrew, Persian, Turkish, and Urdu. That was a moment where I knew that this restaurant would bring everyone together. I learned in my life that like when you change your setting, like everything around you, it's become to be who you are. Then I changed my setting. I went to a different city, dif uh, different language. And I realized that I connect to uh, the soil. And, uh, and uh, then we just like open uh, uh, this idea of like chickpea. And our idea behind it is was to change the world one chickpea at a time because the world need more chickpeas. This is what we open, we open this culture. time I saw him it was like this like 
everything inside my, my body raised, like the trauma, the resentment, the anger, the confusion, the, the like, what's going on right now? How do you respond? Uh, and I remember it was a transformative like, moment for me because in order to act on fear and to act on anger and frustration, I just like, I took a big, bre big breath and like, let everything go and I said, let's try something new. I was like pretty much afraid to say hi, but then I was like, no, I'm going to say hi. Like, this is a, just a regular person that is like, doing exactly the same that I'm doing. Like, why, would I, why would I not say hi to him? And I was like, wanted to like start the conversation right there, right now, you know. And I was like, and when, when, when you guys were in Russia, I was like, I'm just gonna say hi now. And I feel like something is. At that moment, I felt like there would be a continuation to this. Yeah, I had no clue about what our friendship would look like or like that we'd do any events together. But I just seed was, was planted. The yeah. seed was planted. restaurant and then this meeting really blew my mind like it's just like we talking and we like playing each other like we we each other like feeling like we feel exactly the same we want to say it exactly the same we are like on the same uh, wavelength and now the people around us wasn't well, like, we're not <laughs> we're not on the same wavelength and we're continuing each other's sentences and then like just the meeting was between us and they're like okay let's let's continue this separately because we're talking on a like a level of connection that is obviously not present in that conversation when my mom hear that i'm doing like an event with a palestinian guy a, like taste of coexistence the fears thing that she told me it's like Itamar just I want you just to be careful and like those words that she told me like like show me like how distance like the reality that like my mom live it's for my reality <laughs> how 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 far she live in like a misconception and like resentment and like a, a, I would say even propaganda of like how she like a, a, all the all the environment around her teach her to think and I was telling my dad, and my dad literally said the same thing. He's like, be careful. The, they're Israelis at the end of the day. I'm like, and? <laughs> like, so what? Like, and um, and like, he's like, don't take pictures with them. And now we're like doing an interview together. You know? and, like, and that's the, that's the beauty. When you shed light on something that is supposed to be hidden, all the fears um, break down. It's an expression of love in everything you're doing. And then it's like breaking all the barriers that you had put for the majority of your life and had been put for you. You break all these barriers and you're like, you, you see the humanity that connects us. I want people to learn that it's possible. That like, and if you think that you know everything, you don't. And, uh, and uh, you can learn from everything around you. And there is no good or bad. And like, you don't need to choose side. You want to experience, and the only really things that matter in your life is your intention. And if you look to, into your intention in your life, and you want to create love and peace in the world, nothing else in how you act, it doesn't matter anymore. Saying we became the best friends. We became best friends. We became best friends. We <laughs> became best friends. Got it. Best we friends. Be we became best friends. Yeah. We became best friends. Okay. Sure.